How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this logo growth animation. You can apply it to a bunch of different types of objects. We're using a logo here for a logo animation. I'm going to show you how to make it an EV and cycles depending on the engine you like to use. I also want to give you guys a quick update. I just added carbon fiber to the real time materials add on. So if you've already purchased the pack, you can get that now. Head over to your downloads for that update. If you haven't heard of the real-time materials add-on, it is a pack of 250 procedural materials you can add in just one click. If you wanna learn more about that, you can head to the link in my description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so linked in the description is a free project file that you can download on Gumroad to get this project file here with the logo. It's on Gumroad, so when you go to that kind of purchase button, just put in the number zero. Um, so that it makes it free. That was kind of the easiest way for me to get you guys this download. Um, so if you want to follow along with my logo, that is available. If you want to use a different logo, your own, whatever, um, make sure that the file type is SVG. So if you're using it in Inkscape or Illustrator or whatever program you're in that can export out uh, vector graphics, make sure you export it out as an SVG file type. That's going to allow you to use it and it's not geometry yet. You can actually kind of move everything around. This isn't geometry quite yet. And you can extrude it and play with it like we're going to do right now. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna click on this guy and hit Shift D, and then I'm gonna go up here and just hide it in the outliner. So we're gonna deal with this guy first. So right over here is gonna be your curve settings and right on fill mode, we're gonna use none. That's gonna give you that nice outline. And then here in geometry, we're gonna play with actually right here, our depth 0.0005 for the size on that. And that's really gonna give us that um, outline to maintain that shape even when the growth hasn't started yet. You can still kind of make out what you're looking at. So let's go ahead and now focus on this guy. This guy we would not need to um, convert to real geometry. We can keep it there just in case we can reuse it. We have it. Um, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and extrude this guy. So right over here in the geometry, uh, the geometry tab, we're gonna go ahead and just extrude it. It's very, very sensitive. So be careful. It's probably in your best interest just to do uh, numbers. I'm gonna do three, 0 0.003 on my extrude. And then here on this little wireframe type thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it to the front and that's gonna help maintain our shape and a bit of our illusion. So we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, convert to mesh. And now we have kind of an eclectic mesh. It's not good. We cannot displace this with nodes. We'll only be able to fake it with EV, but because we're gonna be using cycles to displace this, unless you're following along with EV, we need proper geometry. So I'm gonna go up here to the wireframe view and we can also kind of see how bad it is. We're gonna go and remesh it. So here in the modifier stack, we're gonna go and get a remesh modifier right there. We're gonna use a sharp, uncheck, remove, disconnected, and then bring up your octree depth. Tell your computer can handle it. My computer can handle an eight, maybe even a nine. That's when it starts lagging. My computer can handle eight. Maybe your computer can handle seven, um, but this is where we're at. But now we have a perfect logo with just wonderful quads with only minor errors, but those are, are gonna be completely unnoticeable. There we go. We have everything ready if I hit now, if you hit tab, you can see that it's because we haven't applied it, but we won't need to apply it. Now we can go ahead and start to um, make this look awesome. So click on this little camera icon. If you're using Eevee, we're going to go ahead and add a material. Just this is going to be the only part in Eevee you're going to need to know. So click on your material, click on new. Let's just go ahead and make it metallic and kind of a mid gray here, right down here. On your blend mode, go to alpha blend. That's for the um, transparency node. That's so that we can actually activate that. That makes it the transparency node work. That's all you'll need to know if you're gonna be following along in Eevee. But since we are gonna be using node displacement, I'm gonna be doing this in cycles. So I prefer you use cycles. That's kind of how this is designed. I'm gonna go ahead and use my GPU. I'm gonna get my viewport samples to 32. That's so that my viewport doesn't lag on my recording. And then we're gonna go ahead and get 300 samples here and I don't like denoising. And I'm not a big fan of denoising. I don't like the way it looks. I prefer a little bit of noise in my kind of sci-fi looking renders anyway. All right, finally, we can get into the fun part. So let's go here to shading. I'm gonna collapse these two windows and uh, bring this up. Let's go ahead and get this going. So last little annoying thing right here, 
on our vertex selection thing. Go here to normals and click auto smooth. That's gonna clear up a couple artifacts as we're designing. Um, so just click on auto smooth. Look at that, that looks ugly, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and get this to be transparent. So we're gonna go ahead and get a mix shader node. I hit shift A, search mix shader. Let's go up here and then let's get in a transparent node. Transparent BSDF, transparent, transparent BSDF, plug that there. And to make sure that it's working, you can play with this factor slider. If you bring this factor over and it's gone, you know it's working. So now we have that. So let's go ahead and manipulate these two to work together. So let's get a color ramp and let's get a gradient. So we get our gradient, oops. So let's get our gradient texture with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled that comes with Blender by default. You'll go ahead and hit Control T Get this object coordinate here, plug the color here and the color into the factor. And then let's just bring these two together and then we have to play with our X location. Now I'm holding down shift, that's gonna make this kind of easy to use, it slows down that motion. So I'll do that and then we're just gonna go ahead and bring these two together till we have a pretty close thing. Now we can see that gradient going from transparency to our nice metallic material with these weird artifacts. That's EV. It is not gonna show up in cycles. If we go here to cycles, I get some world light here. Perfect, all right. So now let's go ahead and get one more node, which is a noise texture. And that's really what's gonna make this kind of have that growth animation. So let's get a noise texture here, plug that there. And then I'm gonna bring my scale up a little bit. And then if we play with that X location, again, holding down shift so it's nice and slow, you can see now we have that growth. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the scale and then you can play with that growth. That is our animation in a sense. Um, let's go ahead and with this, let's go ahead and get some displacement going. Let's go and watch it here in cycles. And then here in cycles, click on this little material button, click on settings and go to bump and displacement. So let's get a displacement node displacement and we'll plug that into the displacement. It does kind of do some goofy things. Let's plug this color into the mid level and look at that. It went insane. So let's bring that scale to zero. So now we can just kind of look at it properly here. So let's play with that scale here. So 0 0.005, let's see how that looks. Okay, so it's really crummy. I do want to go ahead and get in a subdivision surface node just to smooth everything out and bring your render to two. So let's do 0 0.01, there we go. So now we have, if you look, some displacement happening, and then you just need to kind of double check all your edges, make sure they're not colliding. We may be able to get away with two, 0 0.002. All right, that's as far as we can probably go with this. All right, nice. So we can go back to Eevee and you can see how it's going to look in Eevee if you're planning to follow along in Eevee. I promise it's gonna look better once we start lighting it. Let's click on this wireframe and add a material to it. And let's have a little bit of fun. So here on that base color, bring it to about the same. We want it to match that for the most part. Again, it's not an exact science. Let's get a color ramp. And we're gonna plug that color ramp into the emission and then we're gonna get a noise texture. Plug that factor into the color ramp. Okay, so let's bring that emission strength up like this. Now, if you are in EV, hit all these check marks right there. Just click and slide. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and crunch this in here. Bring up that scale. Since we didn't use the object horn, it's gonna look a little bit funny. There we go, like this. Okay, and then here on this white portion, this is where you can select your color. So if we check it out in cycles, it looks like it's red hot. It looks very, very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and run with that. You can see it here in Eevee and Eevee, you'll make it stronger for a brighter look. All right, now we can go ahead and animate this for our video. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go see that when you go over here, you'll see a plus icon. 
you'll go ahead and just bring that up. I'm gonna hit this and go here to timeline. We're gonna to go to the preferences and make sure our animation, so go to the animation tab, make sure it is set to Bezier, very important. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and see this X location. That's gonna be our animated portion and we want it to be really slow. So I'm gonna say five seconds is probably gonna be appropriate. So that's gonna be 120 seconds, but we want it to kind of sit. After those five seconds, we do want the logo to just kind of sit there so you can look at it. So I'm gonna bring eight seconds. This is 10 seconds. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it to about maybe 190. I'm not gonna do that math. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 140. Cool. That's appropriate, we'll see. All right, so now we have this X location. So remember, hold down shift, it's gonna make it a lot more controlled. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, hover right here, and I'm gonna hit I, and then go to 120, right there, and then go all the way right to where it completes, right there, I. Now let's watch it. I think that might be perfect. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So if we press play here, it's very smooth. It's very nice. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and um, fix, finish the rest of this scene to make it look awesome. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. Click front, shift A and get my camera. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pull it back. I'm gonna hit G to kind of center this, G and middle click to bring it out. Just like that, we're gonna go ahead and get a plane. I'm gonna hit RX90 on this plane and I'm gonna bring it really far back. I don't want the lights that are hitting this to hit that. We're gonna be able to control this background later. I'm gonna hit Control A and then I'm gonna hit Control A, apply scale. All right, so let's go ahead and focus on lighting this right here. So here in Cycles, I'm gonna to go to frame frame 67 to light this. So here in Eevee, what you can do is actually hit this drop down and go to scene world, scene lights, and you can actually design in, you can actually do your lighting in the material preview, which uses um, portions of the Eevee engine. So, so you can see it's glowing and stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get a light, which is gonna be my area light. We're gonna bring it up. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a disc just so the reflections are nice and relatively appropriate. And then we can bring that light up to like 352. Let's see it in cycles. Let's bring that to scene world, scene lights here. So that looks like it might be about appropriate. And then bring this world brightness to black. Cool, so let's go ahead and bring that area light. I'd say right there looks right about pro appropriate. Let's make it smaller. I do want to make it look kind of a little bit more of an intimate look. Cool, and then maybe do it 450. That looks good. And then here on this slide, I'm gonna hit Shift D. I'm gonna move it here slightly to the back by hitting G, and then I'm gonna hit R twice to point it. Hitting G. All right, and let's see how that looks in cycles. And then we'll make that a thousand. See how that affects the scene. All right, cool, so it's gonna hit those portions right there. All right, so now we have our logo doing something cool. I'm gonna hit the render button just to see how it looks as a final piece for right now. All right, so this is our render for the time being. I think it's really, really good. Let's go ahead and work on that background. So here in the material preview, we're gonna go ahead and get a point light. And then we're gonna bring that point light back here to be able to affect this wall back here. We're gonna work on that wall separately and then we're gonna go ahead and bring that. So now we have this kind of manufactured uh, vignette, make it slight blue to add some color to this scene. And then we're gonna go to shading to put a pattern on that background. So scene world, scene lights. And then um, click on this plane, I'm gonna click new. Let's go ahead and make it metallic make it a little bit darker. And then here, let's just see it in cycles. It's probably gonna bounce a little bit more. 
So let's get that point light. So let's get that point light to be a bit brighter, maybe 400. Actually, we'll do 500. All right, that looks about right. And I'm also gonna take this point light here and I'm gonna hit G and move it farther this way so the light spreads. So I want the light to kind of spread a little bit better. Okay, so here in uh, Material Preview, I'm gonna click on it. We're gonna get a bump node, so Shift A, Search B, U, M, Normal. We're gonna get a Voronoi, Voronoi Texture. Make sure you use the color, color output. And then I'm gonna go from Elucidian to Manhattan. I really love the Manhattan pattern. And then that is gonna give you this really nice sci-fi look for your background. And um, hopefully it's not too distracting and you can make sure it's not too distracting by making this light a lot brighter. I'm gonna do 800. There we go, so it's a little better. All right, so now we're gonna hit the render button just to see how that looks. All right, so this is my final piece. I wanna go ahead and make these glowing portions brighter so we can go ahead and use those in compositing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here, make my emission strength at like, uh, let's see it in cycles just to make sure it's not gonna lose color. So let's go ahead and 80. Oh, that looks great. Okay, so now let's render one more time and I'm gonna show you how to use the compositor when you hit, after you hit the render button. All right, so now that we're done, let's go here to compositing. Click use nodes. We're gonna go here and get in a viewer. So shift A, search viewer. Plug that there. And then I'm gonna hit shift and right click and just do that. And that's gonna go ahead and make sure that any node you put here is gonna to go to the composite and the viewer. The reason why that's important because anything that's going to the composite is going to be applied to all the frames in your animation. Most of the people just use the viewer, which means you're having trouble compositing for your animations. This is gonna kind of foolproof that. So let's go ahead and get in a glare node. And then we'll go from streaks to fog glow. And then this is where you can decide if that's too bright. And if that is too bright, just go ahead and bump down your mix. And that's gonna lessen the strength. I prefer this look and we're done. All you have to do now is go ahead and render it. So I'll show you whatever your preferred render settings are gonna be. So here on the printer icon, go ahead and pick your resolution. I'm gonna keep it at default, 1080p. And then here, go ahead and pick wherever you're going to render it. If you are going to render a PNG sequence, make a folder. Don't just pick like your desktop. Then that's gonna give, put a, um, what's it, 140 images on your desktop. That might ruin it. So go ahead and make a folder and select that folder for your PNG sequence. That's gonna, that's gonna be it. Now, if you want Blender to compile a video, so you can just press play after you finish exporting, you're gonna go here to from PNG to FFmpeg video. We're gonna go here to encoding to MP4 and then output quality perceptually lossless and you'll be done. And when you're done, you're gonna have a really cool animation like this one. So thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check out those new carbon fiber materials, hit the link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.